مثل كان استصغر نجوما وعذرا وجبال حكمت عدلتها من تفنمت رسيخ البال مثل كان استصغر نجوما وعذرا وجبال ولولا ثر النور لقلنا كنت خيال سلاما يا عمر الفاروق سلاما يا عمر الفاروق Today's topic I think we talked about uh, we promised to talk about Umar and uh, refuting the doubt that uh, you know people some some of the people in somewhere in the world they claim that Umar ran away in the war. Why do we have to defend that? Number one, because it's not true. Number one, number one, it's not true. I mean, I mean, why do we have, why do we have to compromise about that when it's not true? Number one, why do we have to talk about Umar? Isn't it, is it a big deal that we defend Umar and Abu Bakr? It is a big deal. The Prophet told us that it's a big deal. The Prophet ﷺ said, Abu Bakr wa Umar min al-ra'si bi manzilati al-sam'i wal-basar. This hadith is sahih. Abu Bakr and Umar, regarding the fa the, 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 their value, they are just like the importance of the sight and the hearing in the head. I mean, imagine if there's a head that does not contain a sight and a hearing. So, so it's important. The Prophet told us this. That's not the only thing. The other thing is, you know we talk about, you know, some people are expert in Christianity. They talk about Saint Paul. Paul, have you heard of Paul? And they say that Paul is a false person. If Paul is the author of those letters and he was a Jew, that means there's something wrong with those letters, right? That's what you say. Now, tell me who's the collector of the Quran after the Prophet's death? Abu Bakr and Umar. So if we slander them, a Christian may come and say, oh, let me retaliate. You've been talking about St. Paul. Huh? And you say, if it's doubtful, that means all his letters that he wrote are doubtful. So, in turn, we're going to say to you, there are some Muslims in your ummah who claim that Abu Bakr and Umar are kuffar. And if those two are a kuffar and they are the one who collected the Quran, so your book is also doubtful. Did you get the point? Yes. yes. <laughs> so therefore, we have to defend them. And we don't defend them but by truth. No, we're not only fanatic, just, oh, those people are, we love them, that's why we have to defend them. No, 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 no. We defend them by truth. Fine. So here they claim that Abu Bakr and Umar, both they ran away in the war. So Abu Bakr is coward. But that will return as an embarrassment against the Prophet, insult against the Prophet. Against the choice of Allah and His Messenger to the companion of Rasulullah in his hijrah immigration. So did Allah choose for His Prophet a coward companion? Huh? See? You know, sometimes people say something, but they don't know, they don't realize the, its consequence. They don't realize its consequence. And that's the evil consequence of that. Tayyip. But let's, get, let's ask this question again. Wa alaykum as -salam. Did Abu Bakr and Umar run away? Wait a minute, before that, ah, you know there used to be in history Two empires, greatest empires. Who are those two empires? Roman and Persian. Roman and Persian. 
Who destroyed them? Muslims. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about the the leader, the the army. I'm talking about. You know what Omar said, and that's in Sahih Bukhari. Inni la ujahizu jayshi wa wa ana fi salah. I prepare. I set the preparation of my army in my prayer. And it's shaitan sometimes. Is it shaitan who distracts him? But that happens anyway. He says, sometimes it happens to me that I think about preparing my army in the, in the prayer. Jazakallah khair. So how come those who destroyed the two empires are coward? How can this be swallowed? I mean, in, even if you swallow it, you can't digest it. <laughs> even if you swallow it, you can't digest it. Did the Prophet ﷺ send Abu Bakr as a commander in one of the battles? Yes. Narrated by Muslim Ahmad authentically by Salama. He said, غَزَوْنَا فَزَارَةَ وَعَلَيْنَا أَبُوْ بَكْرٍ أَمَّرَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ We attacked Fazara is a tribe, a, a place by the, by the order of Rasulullah who ordered Abu Bakr to, the, to be our commander. Then Abu Bakr decided to make his attack. We attacked them. We killed whom we killed and we took as spoils of war among them. So, this is one of the authentic narrations that the Prophet ordered Abu Bakr to be the leader in one of the battles. So did the Prophet choose for this war a coward person? Not only that, Allah promised, uh, the Prophet said to Abu Bakr, Allah is with us. So how can Allah be a supporter for a coward? Inna Allah ma'ana. La tahzan. Inna Allah ma'ana. The Prophet said it to Abu Bakr, La tahzan. Oh Abu Bakr, Allah is with us. So, the one who had attained, gained the honor of being the Prophet's companion, in his immigration, can't we observe that honor of him? What's the matter? Let's come to the doubt immediately. There's hadith in Bukhari. Okay. There's hadith in Bukhari that Omar, when he became Muslim, he stayed in his house fearing that there are people who are going to kill him because they said, we've had enough. Omar became Muslim? La, 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 la. You know why? Because he's very influential. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, according to Bukhari, he said, we became constantly a'izza, proud. Huh? A'izza, yani, uh, honored, feeling proud. When, at the moment when Omar became Muslim. And they used to be secretly practicing Islam, but after Omar became Muslim, no more secretly. What kind of coward is that, that Muslims become proud and they declare Islam after his conversion? Is he coward? But this is a fact, it's authentic, that Omar stayed in his house having fears that those people are going to kill him. So he said to Al Wa'il ibn As, who was a kafir at the time, he said to him, What's the matter with you? He said, Your people claim that they want to kill me because I converted. He said, Don't worry, I'll be with you. They, they have to kill me first. You know, sometimes those people have, you know, they, they defend people because of honor while they are not Muslims, like Abu Talib. 
Oh, those attackers of Omar, they found it a, a good thing in Bukhari. Omar has fears. Yeah, wait, 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 please, please. You're right, you're right. Until now, you're right. Then Al-As went out and he saw people falling from the mountain just as if they are what? As if they are a spring of water. That means they are hundreds. <laughs> yeah, we know Omar is, is, is uh, brave, but we don't, we don't know that, we don't believe that Omar is Superman. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't believe in Superman as well. Okay, so he ha does he have the right to fear? After hundreds of people are after him, they want to kill him? It's normal to have fears. The, the narration says, Sala bihimul wadi. The valley, Sala bihim, yani, as if they are a great spring of water falling. That means there are a lot of people. How you don't feel, have any kind of fear when you. When, when you know that there are hundreds, now they are after you. It's, it's normal. Taib. Is it normal for Omar? It's, you may say, the other people said, no, it's not normal. You know who are those people? <laughs> those people who believe that someone, as in Mahdi, he went under the cellar. And he's still afraid since 1,300 years. Fearing the upper sight, caliphate because they said that he was afraid of them so I mean I mean you should you should not be the one to speak against the fear of Omar when you have someone who who went down in the cellar because of his fears from the Abbasite yeah, I mean come on we know that if you have a sin don't embarrass people with their sin while you have the sin anyway is the, the question, is this shameful to Omar to have fear against hundreds of people or after his blood? Let's see. اصبر على ما يقولون واذكر عبدنا داود ذا الأيد إنه أواب etc. Then it says, there are two people that climbed his place, his house, and they entered. What does the ayah say? If دَخَلُوا عَلَى دَاوُودَ فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ They entered suddenly, they surprised, alaykum salam, they surprised Dawood, the Prophet Dawood, with their existence in, inside his house. So he, he was terrified of them. So if we say that Omar is blameworthy because he had some fears, then we should be blaming the Prophet. And if you blame the Prophet for having some fears, which is natural, that means this is a matter of kufr. You're blaming the Prophet for, for having some fears. So it's normal. This is a natural, normal thing. Right. But Omar stayed in his house when he had the fears. Let's see, what about the Prophet Musa? فأصبح في المدينة خائفا يترقب. عمر, uh, the, the, the Prophet Musa السلام, after he killed one of the people of Pharaoh, he became in Medina, in, in, in the place there, in his city, scared, expecting someone to kill him after he killed one of the people of Pharaoh. So the, the ayah described him that he had some fears. Should we blame him? We say, it's shameful? No, it's normal. But there's another ayah. Afterwards, he was given, after he was given advice that you should be leaving the town because people after, after your life, they want to kill you. The ayah says, the next one, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبْ Then he went out of the city with fears and expectations that they may kill him. So if there is anything to blame Omar, we have these verses about Dawood and Musa. Tayyip. Tayyip. So is it normal fear? Yes. Even Musa, when he saw the stick moving, he was terrified and he ran away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Ya Musa, aqbil wa la takhaf. Oh Musa, come and don't... Don't be afraid. 
Inna ka minal aminin. You are secured. Did you, did you get my point? Yes. So it's normal to have some fear. He's a human being. For those people, we want to remind them about what our sources of hadith talked about Ali praising Omar. Ali was asked by his son, Muhammad ibn Hanafiya, this is narrated in Bukhari. His son asked him, Oh father, who's the best people? Who's the best person after the Prophet? He said, Abu Bakr. Then Muhammad ibn Hanafiya said, Who's next? He said, Umar. Muhammad, the son of Ali, he was afraid that Ali, his father, may say, Uthman is the third one. He wished as a son of Ali to, that his father may be the third. He said, What about you? Are you the third? He said, No. The narration says, I was afraid that he may say Uthman is the third. He wants his father to be the third. He said, and you are the third. He said, no, I am nothing but one of the Muslims. What a humble person. Could anyone just tell them, please? Yeah. We're giving a lecture. There are people when they speak, they shout. And Ali radiallahu anhu, according to Muslim, Sahih Muslim, I'm not mentioning any unauthentic narration. Ali saw Umar dead after he was killed by this Persian who was so sad. He was outraged because of what Umar did to his empire. He killed him. And now they have. In Iran, there's a big shrine for that killer of Umar. Just Google it and see. Huh? The Masjid of Abu, Lu Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi. If you see it there, you'll be astonished. Okay. Yeah. So, Ali saw Umar dead on the ground. He looked at him. Then he unveiled the garment on his face. Then he said to him, Rahmatullahi alayka ya Abu Hafs. May Allah's mercy be upon you, O oh, Abu Hafs, yani Umar. Fawallahi ma baqiya ba'da Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahadun ahabbu ilayya min an alqa Allah ta'ala bi sahifatihi mink. After the Prophet's death, there is no one. That I wish to have his type of good deeds. That I wish to have something like that and meet Allah with, except your actions, O oh Amr. Did you understand it? Subhanallah. So that's what Ali says about Omar. Allah. Ah. You know why Omar is buried beside the Prophet? Who allowed him? Some people are also angry. Why? Why, why uh, Abu Bakr and Umar are beside the Prophet in his grave? Look who said that. Look, look, look what he said. He said, According to what I think about you, Umar, that Allah will let you gather your two companions, that means in, your, in their grave. Because I have often heard said uh, the Prophet saying, I came with Abu Bakr and Umar, and I went with Abu Bakr and Umar. I came, I went, always, always saying, I came and I went with Abu Bakr and Umar. And I think Allah will let you be gathered now with your two companions as you were in life. Where is that? In Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim both. No. According to Nahj al Balagha, a Shiite book. This is a, this is a holy book to the to the Shiites, to the extent that they said this is this book 
is the brother of the Quran. It is higher than the words of people, but less than the words of Allah. So what level is that? One step to the Quran. I don't know. This is something between that, but this between has no existence. <laughs> This between the <laughs> uh, I leave it to you. <laughs> anyway. anyway. In this book, Omar consulted Ali regarding himself going personally to fight the Romans. So Ali said, No. No. If those people will get rid of you, they will say, This is the origin of the Arabs. This is, the, this is the base of the Arabs, and they'll be happy. They'll be satisfied if they killed him, if they killed you. No, don't go. But they say that he used to believe that he is more deserving for the leadership, more than Omar. Why didn't he make good etat? Have you heard, do you know the meaning of the good etat? Revolution against Omar. You know, if he knows with himself <coughs> that he deserves it more than Omar. He should have been saying to Omar, yeah, Omar, go, go and fight them, yes. And after Omar goes out, either he wishes he asks Allah that Allah will kill him, or he will make a revolution against him, just like what happens nowadays. But he was encouraging him to stay. He said, no, 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 those, those A'ajim, A'ajim, non-Arabs, those, uh, yeah, non-Arabs. If they know that you are going by yourself, they're going to target you and they will be saying, you know, if we target this person, we kill him and he is the origin of the Arabs, we'll be satisfied. No, don't go. So he consulted him regarding what? Huh? Attacking the Romans. So by the confession of their own books, that it was Omar who was behind, huh? the parish of the per of the Roman Empire. Also in another, another uh, uh, place in the same book, he consulted him in invading the Persians. And he was saying something like, and he was saying something very significant. He said, uh, there is no one that people return to except you, O Omar. So what about you, Ali? Do they, don't they claim that Ali deserve it more than... Why he's saying to Omar, there is no one that people return to if you died after your death? What about, why, why didn't he think about himself? I am better than you. People should return to me after you, Omar. He's saying to Omar, there is no one that people return to after your death. And that is in Nahj al Where is that? Let me tell you where is that, Nahj al Sermon number 146 and 134 because every sermon in this book it's numbered and I'm giving you I'm giving you the numbers this is something that usually you don't know about in English but I have to give it to you <coughs> so yeah <coughs> That's, that's, that's enough. Ah, that's the last one now. Now we did not get their doubts and refuting them. No, no, no. I'm mentioning some important things. Do you remember the battle of Uhud? The Muslims were about to be defeated. But thanks to Allah, they did not. But Allah gave them a lesson. All right. After the war finished, Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu, who was kafir at that time, there was, he was speaking between a barrier between him and the Muslims. He was shouting, is Muhammad here? The Prophet said, shh, don't answer. Then, is Abu Bakr here? Is Abu Bakr available? The Prophet said, is Omar available? Don't answer. Hmm. Then he, he laughed and said, 
If they were available, they would have answered me. They're dead. But Umar could not bear it. He said, no, they're not dead. They're alive, you enemy of Allah. And there will be a sorrow for you until you die. Then he said, one by one, we got you. While you got us in Badr, we got you, one by one. He said, no. And the Prophet said, don't you answer him? Now, reply. Omar said, no. It is not equal. Our dead people are in Jannah, while your dead people are in hell. He said, Bal. He's saying to, the, to his statue, raise up. That means in honor and dignity. The Prophet said, don't you answer him. They said, what shall we do, O Prophet? He said, tell him, Allahu a'la wa ajal. Allah is more uh, high in honor and dignity. Then he said, <coughs> uh, wait. Yeah, anyway. So the question is, why Abu Sufyan mentioned the Prophet as first and then Abu Bakr as second? Why didn't he say, among you is Mu'ad, uh, Mu among you is, uh, for example, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, among... Why he started uh, with Abu Bakr and then with Umar? Why he mentioned those two? Because the Kuffar know their significance and influence within the Muslim community. It's very clear. Now, the Prophet ﷺ was surrounded by some of his wives and his rela relatives. And they're all women and they were not wearing the hijab. And they were asking the Prophet things and they were speaking with a high voice. They realized that someone is coming to the Prophet, and that was Umar. They all ran away, and they started to put the hijab. The Prophet said to Umar, I'm astonished, Umar. When they saw you, they put the hijab, and they ran away. He said, Ay aduwati anfusihin, Umar said it. O oh, enemy of your own souls. Do you fear me while you don't fear Rasulullah and you're raising your voices upon him? They said, you, anta afaddu wa aghla, you are more blunt and harsh than the Prophet. Now the Prophet said, Eh, ya ibn al-Khattab, oh, Umar, Wallahi ma salakta fajjan illa salaka shaytan fajjan akhar. Oh, Umar. You haven't taken away, but the devil has to take another way. Now, there is a man whose name is Muhammad al-Shirazi, one of the sheikhs of the Shia. He was known by this phrase that he said. If I entered paradise and I saw Umar, I'll be asking Allah to exit me, to take me out of paradise. I don't want to be in the same place with Umar. Good luck, good luck to him. Good luck to him. We wish, we we wish he enjoy a zakum tree in hell. Not McDonald. There's no McDonald meals. There is zakum meals. Yes. This man was in the pro uh, was in the, in the hospital. And he has a white skin and white beard. But when he died, he looked black. Yes. Another person, his name is Muhammad Rida Shirazi. He's, he was always mocking Omar and speaking against Omar and proving Omar to be the worst person on earth, subhanAllah. We saw many, you know, say, um, many bruises on his face many bruises on his face after he died the his followers they accused the iranian intelligence of beating him up but the iranians said we didn't do it 
the Iranians did not want to show his corp, lest it would be something, that, lest it would be known that this is a miracle, miraculous thing happened. But the Shia people, his followers, they insisted that the Iranian intelligence did it. Now how can we solve their problem? The Iranians deny it. Those people are accusing them. I can solve it for them. Allah said, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يَتَوَفَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ وَذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ If you but to see how the angels, when those kafirs die, السلام, they keep hitting their faces and their asses. It's in the Quran, in Surah, in Surah Al-Anfal. And taste the embarrassing uh, uh, torture. So that's the solution. That's the solution. And internally, the other side, we can see in Sahih al-Bukhari that uh, the Muslims were fixing a wall and suddenly that wall collapsed and one foot was shown in the area of the Prophet's grave. People were terrified. Why, why are they terrified? That's narrated in Bukhari. Why they were terrified? Because the foot is still fresh. It was not de, huh? decomposed. decomposed. It was not decomposed. People were terrified. Oh, the foot of the Prophet may be. Then they recognized that this was not the foot of the Prophet. This was the foot of Omar. Tell me, what is the benefit of this narration? If you read it just like that, you may not recognize something important. Allah wants to show you, to show the people, and to let us know that this is a miracle of Omar, that he really died as Shaheed. And it's also narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari that Umar was supplicating Allah saying, Allahumma rzuqni shahadatan fi sabilik fi madinati nabiyyik. Oh Allah, grant me a shahada for your sake in the city of your Prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his supplication. So the... So while we see the bruises on the, faces, on the face of that person, Allah showed the foot of Umar. He showed it purposely to let us know who was Umar and his body was not decomposed. That's Umar. What do you mean by decomposed? Huh? You know, in, when the body goes in the ground, generally uh, the body will rot. Oh, and yeah. that's called decomposition. Yeah. But like if you leave meat on the side, it will go bad. Same thing. Now let's come to the doubt, Jazakallah khairan. Let's get to the doubt that they give. We have in Sahih al-Bukhari a narration that the Muslims were <coughs> ambushed by those people in, in Hudaybiyah. They were not fighting. They were walking, taking their way until they reached to a passage behind two big hills. And those people of Hudaybiyah, in Hudaybiyah, they were, they were behind these two hills waiting for them to come close as they got close, they started to launch them, and they were professional in launching their arrows. And many of the Muslims, they had to retreat. And that's normal. It's normal. It's not shameful, but this is what the narration says. Qatada, he said, I was fighting a man, then I saw the Muslims retreating, and I was retreating with them. Then, I, after that, I saw Umar standing with the people. And I said to him, what is the matter with people? He said, this is the Qadr of Allah. This is Allah's decree. They say, oh, Umar was with the people. He saw him with the people. That means Umar ran away. Is this a clear cut text? No. There's a possibility. It's not clear. And here were the people of of misguidance, huh? They they lack uh, they uh, um, they stand, yani. They 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 take advantage of it. 
Well, it's not clear. It's possible. It's possible. Let's, let's be realistic and fair enough to say to them, all right, but it's not, uh, it's not definite. It's possible. Right? Okay. Bye. There's another narration. He said, I followed Umar ibn Khattab and I, saw, I said to him, what is, the matter, what, what is the matter with the people? He said, Amrullah. Then the people returned after they retreated. So that shows that Umar is not with them. But even this, it's a possibility. No problem. Now, there is a clear cut hadith. Very clear. What is it? it say, this narration says that Umar was giving a sermon and he's, he talked about what happened in Hudaybiyah. And he said, I ran away until I climbed the mountain because I was afraid. And I was jumping just like, you know, the deer or something. I was jumping because of my fear. Is this clear or not? It's clear that Umar ran away. But it's not authentic. <laughs> it's narrated, uh, uh, it was mentioned in the book of history of At-Tabari, Tariq At-Tabari. But it's not authentic. Who's the problem? There are two problems in this narration. Abu Hisham al-Rifai and Abu Bakr ibn Ayyash. Al-Bukhari said about this Abu, uh, Abu, Abu Hisham al-Rifai, he said, all scholars agreed that his narrations are rejected, not accepted. Ajma'u. <coughs> Ajma'u ala da'fihi. And all scholars agreed that he's weak. His narrations are not accepted. So this narration is clear cut. Definite. That Umar ran But it's not authentic. Taib. <laughs> But even if this was proven, it doesn't make any sense. Why? Musa himself said to Pharaoh, "Fafaratu minkum lamma khiftukum." I ran away from you when I feared you. Fawahabali Rabbi hukman wajalani min al mursalin. The Quran talked about Musa running from the people of Pharaoh because he feared them. So even even let's say that this authentic is this this narration is authentic. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything. It's normal that a person, if he has fears, okay, plus <coughs> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave the people of Hudaybiyah when they ran away because they retreated. Scholars said only in one battle retreating was not allowed because the Muslims had none except the Prophet to return to. They can uh, that was that was in Badr. Only in Badr, if people re retreated and they decided to get back to their houses, it's haram. It's a major sin. Except if it happens in other battles, now after that, it is not a big problem. All scholars agreed on that. And the evidence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَلَّوْ مِنْكُمْ يَوْمَ الْتَقَى الْجَمْعَانِ Those who retreated among you when the two groups confronted إِنَّمَا اسْتَزَلَّهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ بِبَعْضِ مَا كَسَبُوا The devil had taken some portions of them by what they committed, some mistakes, some sins. وَلَقَدْ عَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ And Allah had forbade... Forbade? Forbeard. 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 Forbade, yeah, forbade them. That means he forgot them. He, he had uh, forgiven them. Uh, no, forgave. 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 Yeah, sorry. No, but there's something called uh, uh, the, the forbearance. word forbearance. Forbearance. Yeah. Forbearance means uh, like, you know, forbeard you them. Forbeard them. You yes. Forbeard them. Yes. Tolerated. Passover. Yeah, no, like if um, your son is jumping around and you're putting up with it. You're, ah. you're showing oh, yeah, them okay, okay. Yeah, something like tolerance. Yeah, yeah, tolerance. Some, something like tolerance. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So Allah had forgiven them for what happened. If Allah for, forgave someone, you should not blame whom Allah forgave. It's very important. How come Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared in his Quran that he forgave those who ran, who retreated? Yes. And then you keep blaming them. Oh, they're, they're, but Allah forgave them. 
and Umar was not with them. How? What is the evidence? What is the evidence? Uh, wait, wait, how long it took with them running away? You know, the, the narration says that when they retreated, the Prophet stood steadily. He did not run. And he was calling them. Okay, he ordered Al-Abbas to call them. And they were saying, Labayk, Labayk, they came back. How long it took with them? Let's say 13 minutes? No problem. I mean, 13 minutes compared to 13 centuries of your Mahdi's running away and hiding in the cellar. Can you compare 13 minutes to 13 centuries? Where's your mind? Where's your mind? The other thing is, Umar had given the pledge bay'ah under the tree. Suppose he, he ran away. He is one of the people of Ash-Shajara, the people of the tree. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَيْعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةَ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with those who gave you bay'ah, pledge, O oh Messenger. He knew what's in their hearts. And he descended tranquility over them, the people of Ash-Shajar. The Prophet Muhammad said authentically, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ النَّارَ أَحَدٌ مِمَّنْ بَيَعَةَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةَ No one among those who gave the bay'ah under the tree will ever enter hell. And Abu Bakr and Umar were with them. Yani in many cases, we can see that even they, if they retreated, they would not be blamed. Oh, by the way, Abu Bakr and Umar were with the people of Badr. And the Prophet said that Allah said to the people of Badr, do whatever you want to do, for I have forgiven you. Sir. But those people, no, 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 they still want to blame. Hey, go blame your Mahdi for leaving the Ummah without a leader. Yani, it does make me happy to see the, the Pope in the Vatican standing at the window and waving with his hand to the people like this and millions Millions of people standing and waving to him as well. well. We need that kind of Mahdi to go out of his cellar and at least we want him to wave, to wave with his hand to the people just like the Pope does to his people. At least, I mean, it's shameful. It's shameful to follow those people who believe that the, the, their leader is underground. I mean, can, can, you, be, can you accept? Can you accept? Uh, 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 different men, because we also working with the Sure, sure, that's another case, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Ah, don't forget what the Prophet said about Abu Bakr and Umar. Abu Bakr, he wanted to get in to see the Prophet, then Abu Bakr said to Abu Huraira, uh, to, to Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, go to Abu Bakr and let him in and give him the good news of entering Jannah. And then afterwards, Umar came. And the Prophet said to Musa, give him the good news as well, that he is in Jannah. Khalas! Shouldn't this be enough for you? Bye. There's another narration by Ibn Abi Shayba that uh, Umar went to Khaybar and uh, he ran away with the companions and they, uh, he retreated. He was saying to them, you are cowards. And they were saying to him, but you are the coward. It's very clear. Clear cut? Huh? Is it? Yes, clear cut. But it's not authentic. Narrated by Naeem ibn Hakim. And also another problem is Abu Maryam. Abu Maryam al Thaqafi. Uh, it was decided by Ahl al-Hadith that he is unknown narrator. Nobody know him with his credibility. We don't know this man. And also, uh, Nu'aym ibn Hakim, scholars said, like Al-Haythami, he said, he is nothing. Ibn al-Jawzi said, Ahadithu manakir. Yani all of his narrations are criticized, not accepted, not approved. So you see, Either the Shia rely on not uh, um, ambiguous statements but authentic 
or clear-cut statements, narrations, but unauthentic. Either of the two. But now we have something we will end with, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. Oh, uh, be, bear with me, just one narration, one more narration. It's been narrated that uh, Abu Bakr said, I was one of those who retreated and came back to the Prophet Sallallahu after we ran away. Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, yes. It's clear, right? Mm -hmm. Clear cut. Mm -hmm. But not authentic. Mm -hmm. Narrated by Abu Bakr Ahmad ibn Abi Darim. And scholars said about this, this man, Rafidi. <laughs> Yani, from, from you to you, <laughs> from you to you. <laughs> and also Muhammad bin Uthman ibn Abi Shaybah, and also Muhammad ibn Ishaq ibn Yahya ibn Talha. Or we have three false narrators in this narration. It's, so it's rejected. Okay. Now, now, bear with me here. I'm going to end with that. This, this, inshallah, lecture is very important and very informative. And it wipes, it makes it clear to you about some attacks that people give. Because those people, they, uh, the, the, the devil hired their tons and he's using these tons. He hired them as a contract to use these contract, uh, to use these uh, uh, tons. They always make blah, blah, blah. And, and the kuffar are so happy with those people. They keep, because, because the West are so happy, the West is so happy to have these people who speak against those people, uh, Bakr and Umar, in order to, huh, to discredit the sources of Islam, especially the Quran. Because those people say that Bakr and Umar, they changed the Quran, they twisted it. So if they twisted the Quran, okay, that means the Quran is not reliable. Who says that? Those Muslim people, they are Shia Muslims, they say that. They will be, so if those, will be, if those will become influential in the Ummah, there will be a problem. Yeah. <coughs> There's a narration narrated by Yaqub, Haddathana Abi an, uh, an Ibn Ishaq, Muhammad Ibn Ishaq, Haddathani Asim Ibn Umar, he mentioned the whole story of Hudaybiyah and he ended with, I'm not going to take you, take you long. He said, among those who stood steady with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a couple of his family, Ahlul Bayt, some people, among them Ali ibn Abi Talib, Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, wa ibnuhu al-Fadl ibn Abbas, wa Abu Sufyan ibn al-Harith, and... Abu Bakr and Umar were standing still beside the Prophet. They did not run away. Which is authentic. And I declared it on the TV. There's a slight problem with Muhammad ibn Ishaq. Muhammad ibn Ishaq, they say, Alaikum salam. Muhammad ibn Ishaq is okay. But he has one problem. If he says, An. Qatada, an, he used an. This is a problem in the hadith. If he said, haddathani, he told me, there's no problem in the hadith. Because he's mudallis. Mudallis, yani, there is a possibility that he had, he, he, he had hidden one narrator. There's a possibility, despite his authentic person. He's trustworthy, I mean. So that's the slight <coughs> problem with him. But in, there is another narration for him, narrated by Asir and Nabawiya for Ibn Hisham authentically, and Dala al Nubuwa for Al Bayhaqi, that he said, Haddathani Umar bin Qatada. There's no more problem in the narration. It's authentic. What does it say? Among those who stood steadily behind the Prophet ﷺ were some of his family, Ahlul Bayt. Al Abbas, his son Al Fadl, uh, and uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and Abu Sufyan ibn Al Harith, and Abu Bakr and Umar. Then we say to them goodbye. <laughs> That's all, folks. The story is finished. Alhamdulillah, we have proven authentically 
that Abu Bakr and Umar, they stood steadily behind Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they did not retreat. Even if they retreated, we have a prophet who retreated because of a fear and that's natural. So if, if this is shameful, you should put that shame on the prophet, that which will make you a huh, kuffar eventually. This is what I wanted to mention. And uh, I think it is very important to keep defending those two persons precisely because being grateful to what they did. They are, they are the collectors. They are the collectors of the Quran. They are the ones who kept struggling for Islam until the last moment of their life. And we know how, you know what Omar said before he died? He said, if Allah grant me a longer life, I will not let any widow, you know the widow? Be needing anyone. I will make a system that will enrich all the people in Iraq. But he died before that. Is this gratefulness? Is this gratefulness that his wish was to, to support those people and now the attacks coming from that place? Subhanallah, it's amazing. Anyway, Jazakallah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, this is another uh, this is another issue uh, um, they they said that uh, we are ordered to keep reading this current Quran until the Mahdi will be bringing the perfect one uh, yeah. But she, she, they've also changed some of the ayat. Yeah. They, they have the, the real Quran and the next bit they say this is the ayat that Omar changed and it was originally this ayat. Have you seen them do this shit? No. Okay. I've seen their videos they put on YouTube and they do this shit. But basically, basically, they do not dare to say that the Quran that we have today is different. No. They don't do What they say, what, they, what I know them, saying that we have the third the two other thirds are not available okay because Ali decided to keep them away and uh, it's with Al Mahdi in his cellar and when he get out he will be given to and by the way they say that when he when he get out of the cellar he'll be bringing a new book a new book oh my goodness <laughs> Yeah, the Christians say that their testament, their testament is new. Mm -hmm. And they call the, the, the book of the Jews the Old Testament. Oh, yeah. And theirs is New Testament. And those people say that when he comes, he's going to bring a New Testament. <laughs> so they will make this Quran Old Testament. <laughs> and the one that the Mahdi comes with is... <laughs> this is totally, totally, any, uh, what do you call it? Uh, how do you describe that, Sheikh? He's the shaitan. Huh? <laughs> well, there's a number of words, but they're not befitting the masjid. Subhanallah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>